This is a sound file from the Wikipedia Spoken Word Project on Mrs. Doubtfire at en.wikipedia.org, recorded by a user, Lauren PT 15 Mrs. Doubtfire is a 1993 American comedy film starring Robin Williams, who also served as co-producer, and Sally Field, and based on the novel Alice Madame Doubtfire by Anne Fine. It was directed by Chris Columbus, distributed by 20th Century Fox. It was the uh, Academy Award for Best Makeup, although the film received mixed reviews during its original theatrical run. Subsequent reevaluation has been more positive. The film was placed in 67th in the American Film Institute's 100 Years, 100 Laughs, America's Funniest Movies. It listed the 100 Funniest Movies of the 21st Century and was also rated number 40 on Bravo's 100 Funniest Movies of All Time. The original music score was composed by Howard Shore. Contents 1. Plot 2. Cast 3. Production 3.1. Filming 3.2. Music 4. Reaction 4.1. Box Office 4.2. Critical Reception 4.3. Accolades 5. Sequel 6. In Popular Culture 7. See Also 8. References 9. External Links Plot Daniel Hillard Robin Williams is a talented but recently unemployed voice actor living in San Francisco. Daniel is devoted to his three children, Lydia, Lisa, Jacob, Chris, Matthew Lawrence, and Natalie, Mara Wilson. But he is not good disciplinarian. His wife, Miranda, Sally Field, considers him irresponsible and immature. And their marriage is on the rocks. When Daniel throws Chris a birthday party despite his bad report card, Miranda loses her temper and asks for a divorce. At their first custody hearing, the judge provisionally grants Miranda custody of the children, as Daniel has neither a suitable residence nor a steady job. Daniel learns that Miranda intends to hire a housekeeper to care for the children. With Miranda unwilling to let him watch the kids, Daniel surreptitiously alters her class E fields form and calls for a few times using his voice acting skills to pose as several disturbing applicants. He then calls her posing as a pleasant and kind elderly Scottish nanny whom he dubs Miss Eugenia Doubtfire. After seeing a newspaper headline with the words Doubtfire, impressed by her supposed credentials, Miranda invites Mrs. Doubtfire for an interview. Daniel enlists his gay brother Frank Harvey Fernstein, a makeup artist, and Frank's partner Jack to transform him into Mrs. Doubtfire. Neither Miranda nor the children recognize Daniel when he goes to the interview as Mrs. Doubtfire and Miranda hires her. The children initially struggle to adjust to Mrs. Doubtfire's strict methods, but soon makes herself an indispensable part of the family, is able to heal her rocky relationship with her children. Daniel who has had to learn several skills, also steadily rebuilds his life. He gets a menial job at a television station while learning to be a better parent and improving his apartment. However, he is riven with jealousy as he notices Miranda's new love interest, Stuart Dunmeyer, Pierce Bronson, spending more time with his family. Daniel also realized he has created another barrier when he asks Miranda if he can look after the children one night. She refuses, explaining that although Daniel has improved himself greatly, she could never dismiss Mrs. Doubtfire, as she has made their life so much better. One day, Chris and Lydia inadvertently discover that Mrs. Doubtfire is really their father in disguise, leading him to explain his actions to them. Glad that he is back in their lives, Chris and Lydia agree not to tell anyone. At the television station, CEO Jonathan Lundy, Robert Prosky, is amused when he sees Daniel clowning around with toy dinosaurs on the set of the outdated children's program. He invites him to dinner at Bridges Restaurant on the coming Friday evening to pitch new ideas. Meanwhile, Amanda expects to doubtfire to explain a birthday dinner with Stuart and the children at the same time and place. Unable to turn down the invitation, reschedule his meeting with Lundy, Daniel goes to the restaurant and has to rotate between both dinners by changing in and out of Mrs. Dunfire's costume in the restaurant. Because alcoholic beverages have been ordered at both tables, Daniel's behavior becomes more erratic. He dumps pepper, which Stuart is allergic to, on Stuart's order and then forgets to change out of the Mrs. Doubtfire costume before returning to Lundy's table. Daniel covers for his mistake by explaining to a confused Lundy that after his alter ego and his ideas for a new television persona, which impresses his supervisor. However, Stuart starts choking on the pepper. 
While still in Mrs. Doubtfire's costume, Daniel administers the Heimlich maneuver to Stuart. During the struggle to rip Daniel's mask off, revealing his identity. Horrified and furious at discovering who her housekeeper is, Miranda storms out of the restaurant with Stu and the children. At their next custody hearing, Daniel pleads his case, but despite holding a job in a suitable home and despite his personal explanation for the ruse, the judge considers the behavior unorthodox and grants Miranda full custody of the children with Daniel limited supervised visitation once a week. The ruling devastates Daniel. Without Mrs. Dunbar, the children are again withdrawn and depressed. Even Miranda admits that their lives were so much better without her. They are then delighted to see Daniel dressed as Mrs. Doubtfire hosting his new television program, Eugenia's House, which has become a hit. Miranda visits Daniel at the studio, telling him that she and her kids were happier with him involved. She forgives him and successfully appeals to a court and ruling, allowing him to share custody and then reconcile with other children. Later, she introduces the children to the new babysitter, Daniel now undisguised and without supervision, who is allowed to see them anytime he wants. Daniel and the kids head out for the day while Miranda happily watches an episode of Eugenia's House, where Mrs. Doubtfire answers a letter from a little girl whose parents are divorcing. Mrs. Doubtfire responds with the advice that no matter what the setup or circumstances, wherever there is love, anyone will have a family in your heart. Section 3, Cast Robin Williams as Daniel Hillard, Miss Eugenia Doubtfire, Sally Field as Miranda Hillard, Pierce Bronson as Stuart Stu Dunmeyer, Lisa Jacob as Lydia Liddy Hart, Matthew Lawrence as Christopher Chris Hillard, Maria Wilson as Natalie Natty Hillard, Harvey Fernstein as Frank Hillard, Scott Caporo as Jack, Robert Prosky as Mr. Jonathan Lundy, Polly Holiday as Gloria Shetty and the Hillard's neighbor, Anna Hadley as Mrs. Selner and the court liaison. Martin Mull as Justin Gregory, William Newman as Mr. Sprinkles, Tom Williams as Todd the Bartender. Section 4, Production, Filming. Chicago was the studio's first choice for filming. However, two new television shows, ER and Chicago Hope, had a lease with the city around the same time period, and the production team eventually went with San Francisco. Various locations in the city were used for filming. Parts were shot at the studio's television station KTVU in Oakland. The street signs for the intersection near the Painted Lady Home, Stinier Broadway, were on visible screen. The exact address, 2640 Steiner Street, 3747, 38 North, 122, 2710.78 West, became a tourist attraction for some time after the film's release. Following William's death on August 11, 2014, the house became an impromptu memorial. Through the film's exteriors were extensive. Its interiors were all shot in the warehouse bay area. It turned into a soundstage. While Williams divorced his father character, Daniel lived upstairs in Daniel Bakery, 516 Green Street. His children attended at Filbert, Hillary, and Taylor. The restaurant scene was filmed in an actual upscale restaurant, Bridges Restaurant and Bar, in downtown Danville, California, which is still in operation as of August 2014. Music. Track listing. 1. Mrs. Doubtfire. 2058. 2. Divorce. 256. 3. My name is Elsa Immelund. 2055. Me, Mrs. Doubtfire. 214. Tea time with Mrs. Seldner. 358. Dinner is served. 218. Daniel and the kids. 229. Cable car is 456. Bridges restaurant. 613. Show's over. 326. The kids need you. 321. Figaro's Papa's got a brand new bag. 323. It was po the score was composed, orchestrated, and conducted by Howard Shore. The song Robin Williams sings at the cartoon voiceover in the beginning is Largo al Factotum. Other songs featured often were chosen referencing the identity of Mrs. Doubtfire. These songs include Dude Looks Like a Lady, performed by Aerosmith, Walk Like a Man by the Four Seasons, Luck Be a Lady, performed by Frank Sinatra, Papa's Got a Brand New Bag, performed by James Brown. Additionally, these songs were featured Jump Around, performed by the House of Pain, but some lines were cut to keep the image family friendly. Stormy Monday Blues, performed by B.B. King and Albert Collins. Section 6. Reaction. Box office. The film was a huge box office success. Did you do that? 219,195, 243 dollars in the United States, along with 222,090,952 dollars in other countries. For a worldwide total of four four one comma two eight six comma one nine five dollars, it became the second highest grossing film of nineteen ninety three, behind only Jurassic Park. Critical reception: The movie received mixed positive reviews. At the time of its release, several critics compared Mrs. Doubtfire, unfortunately, with Some Like It Hot, and others with whom viewed most favorably noted it is Tootsie. 
Mrs. Doubtfire has a fresh rating of 71%, with an average score of 5.8 out of 10 on Rotten Tomatoes, based on 49 reviews. On Metacritic, the film holds a score of 53 out of 100, indicating mixed or average review, based on 16 credits. Accolades. 66 Academy Film Awards, Best Makeup, 1. 51st Globe and Globe Awards, Best Picture, Musical Comedy, 1. Best Actor, Musical Comedy, Robin Williams, 1. BAFTA Awards, 1994, Best Makeup and Hair, Nominee, America Film Institute, AFI's 100 Years, 100 Last, Number 67, AFI's 100 Years, 100 Songs, Dude Looks Like a Lady, Nominated. Section 7, Sequel. Writing the sequels of Mrs. Doubtfire 2 began in 2001 by Body Haunt. Robin Williams was set to return in disguise as an old nanny, similar to the first movie due to problems with the script. Writing began in 2006 for Robin Williams, allegedly unhappy with the plot. The movie was expected to be released in 2007, but following further scripts, the sequel was declared scrap. The sequel story in involved Williams and Mrs. Doubtfire moving close to his daughter's college so they keep an eye on her. In an interview for Newsday, Williams said the movie sequel was indefinitely scrapped, stating his reasons was said that the script just didn't work. In May 2013, Chris Columbus stated that Robin Williams and I are talking about a sequel to Mrs. Doubtfire. We've talked about it in the studios interested in it. The thing that fascinates us about a sequel to Mrs. Doubtfire is that most actors who create an ironic character like Mrs. Doubtfire, when you come back and do that character, you're just 20 years older, so you're not good at looking the same. The cool thing with Mrs. Doubtfire is there's a character, there's a woman who is actually going to look exactly as she did in 1993 so I look forward to seeing that trailer I love the concept and there's no CGI so we need to make absolutely certain the story is good emotionally story strong there's a reason for telling it it's not like big mama's house or something it has to be emotional as funny as April 17, 2014, a sequel was in development of Fox 2000. Columbus and Williams were expecting to return, and Elf screenwriter David Williams was writing the script. Robin Williams' death on August 11, 2014, left the film in its early stages. Section 8. In popular culture, Williams, as a genie, performs as a spoof rehearsal in Mrs. Doubtfire in Disney's direct direct video, Aladdin the King of Thebes, when he decides to use Jasmine, some moral support. In How I Met Your Mother episode The Playbook, Barney played, Neil Patrick Harris performs the role of Miss Stoutfire as Stintzfire as a trick to pick up girls. Tobias Boonke, David Cross, dresses up as an elderly man in Mrs. Featherbottom in the TV show Arrested Development to get closer to his daughter. Something descriptive by the narrator as the exact plot of Mrs. Doubtfire. In the episode, A Song for Margot, the critic, Frank okay. Franklin discusses himself as Doc Franklin to be the way nanny of the family. When Elmer claims that he can see the kids anytime, Franklin dismisses it, claiming, well, who wants to do that? The date is August 16th, 2014. Thank you for listening.